Welcome back! In today's video, I'll show how to add some basic middleware to this web application. Middleware is a pretty ambiguous subject, so to narrow it down, we'll specifically be attaching functionality to our existing handlers. The example that I'll use today is authentication. So if we look at our code, this index get handler is the only handler we have right now that requires authentication. So it has the code to look up the session and make sure that they're logged in. And if they're not logged in, it redirects them to the login page. Now, if we were to add any additional handlers, any other endpoints for our web application where we want the user to be logged in, we'd have to copy and paste this code to each one. And that's just way too excessive. So we'll use middleware to solve this problem. The idea here is pretty simple. We need to create a function that takes as input one of our handlers and returns a new handler. If you're familiar with functional programming, this should be pretty routine stuff. If not, bear with me, it should make sense by the end of this video. So the first thing we're going to do is implement this function. We'll call it auth required. And it's going to take in a handler of the type HTTP handler func. And it's going to return a handler of the type HTTP handler func. And inside this function, we're going to return a function that has the same signature as the handlers we've been using. So it's basically going to going to return a handler. And then inside that function, we're going to call the serve HTTP method of the handler that was passed to this. Now this might sound confusing, so let me try to clear this up. This function is going to take in a handler, like this handler for instance. And then it's going to return a function that calls the serve HTTP method of this handler. And the result of that is basically to just execute this handler. And this is basically how our middleware is going to work. We have this function that's able to intercept another handler. And now we can start adding functionality to the handler that's returned from this. And in this case, we're going to steal the code from the index get handler because this is the code that handles the actual authentication. So now we're returning this handler and it's going to make sure that they have a session and that there's a username attached to the session. Otherwise, it's going to redirect. And see if it redirects with this return here, then the original handler will never be called. So if this was the original handler that we passed to our middleware, it never gets called and they just go straight to the login page. And that's exactly what we want. Now this is where the real magic starts to happen. We just took the authentication off of this function. If we want to add it back using our middleware, all we have to do is go up to where we define all of our routes and then wrap that function with our middleware. Now maybe it'll start to make sense. This function call takes in this index get handler here, and then it returns a new function with the same signature as a normal handler, does all the logic, and then if it gets to the end here, it calls that original handler, which in this case is the index get handler. So now we've just added this functionality to this handler without having to have the functionality in the handler itself, which is really convenient because we also need this functionality on the index post handler because we don't want anyone to be able to post comments unless they're logged in. They shouldn't be able to view the comments or post the comments and now we're able to require that. And this is the point where we need to test everything just to make sure it all still works. So we'll open up our terminal type go run main.go and hopefully this won't spew out any errors. It did spew out an error, so let's try to debug this. 
So the error happens on line 42. Undefined handler in handler dot serve HTTP. So line 42. It's because I misspelled handler here. So go ahead and correct that. Then jump back to the terminal. And now hopefully we won't have any more errors. Looks like it's all good. So open up the browser and go to localhost 8080. It did tell us that we have to log in. So it looks like the middleware is working. Let's make sure it does work when we are logged in. And it's not working. <laughs> We might still have Redis down, actually, from the previous video. Hold on a second. Let's go back to the terminal. Stop it. sudo service redis start. And go back to the browser. DB password. There we go. So it was just because Redis was down from the last video when I used that as an example for error handling. And it did handle our error. We saw the internal server error response. But it looks like everything's working. So there you go. We have our middleware. In the next video, I think I'll do some cleanup of the code because we're looking at uh, over a hundred lines of Go code in this project. And so far, I haven't really done anything to structure this or, you know, create any sanity out of this mess. In the next video, that's what we'll cover. And uh, until then, have a nice day.